What's up everyone? Welcome back to ARTV. My name is John and I started Album Review TV, which is now just known as ARTV September 29th, 2009. And during that time of the foundation, I also launched a music blog that in retrospect is uh, pretty cringeworthy. I've checked it out a couple of times, but I've never really explored just from like the banner and from the overall text layout and everything. This was like a blogger account, so it still exists, and I figured what better way to actually put myself on blast than to roast my old music blog. Now granted, it's probably not all awful. I was pouring my heart into this, and I'm not trying to make fun of anybody starting a blog and you're early on. Your early stuff, you just always gotta look at it that way. You're always gonna improve, and you look back and you're like, oh my god, why did I put that on the internet? We're gonna go through and roast some of these posts, take a look and see what I was thinking, what I was feeling at the time from my own personal memory. I remember sometimes doing track reviews, album reviews occasionally in text form on there. There's gonna be a few newer posts. I think up until like 2015 or so, I was still posting like year-end content on there, maybe even 2016, but I really wasn't using the blog outside of that. And I know that if you wanna check it out, I will leave a link in the description down below. It's artvreviews.blogspot.com. That was originally albumreviewtv.blogspot.com, but you know your boy got an upgrade. If you find yourself enjoying the video today while you're watching, then please do me a favor and drop a like on the video. Subscribe if this happens to be your first video, although I hope this isn't your first video because of what a weird first impression of me. And blast off, it's time to head to artvreviews.blogspot.com com and I'm ready for it. I know the banner. Yep, there it is. Right up top, you can see that cringy ass banner. Album Review TV's blog in all caps. Like, this is a big, exciting thing. Which, when I started this in 2010, it probably was. And this is taking fucking forever to load, or else these images that I put in here are just no longer in existence. I've got the links to all my stuff over here, so I see video reviews, Facebook, Twitter, and yes, uh, these links are definitely outdated. It's got like a 2014 version of my logo in my About Me section over here. We got the blog archive, so this is kind of what I was hoping to get to. I love music with a burning passion. Insert flame emoji here, John. Whoa, I am killing it over here. Eight followers? I, wow, maybe I need to jump back to Blogger. Clearly, this is where things are popping off. So I clicked over to my profile and apparently I joined in September of 2011, which is a little bit later than I would have expected, but I think I was most active on there from like 2011 to 2013. I've almost had a thousand profile views, so shout out to anybody that goes and checks it out and gets me over that thousand mark after this. About me, male industry, internet, occupation, music critic, a location, my city, a links, audio clip. What is this? Let's open this in another tab here. It is Coldplay Paradise. Really? That's what I put as my link, my official link in there. I put Coldplay's Paradise. Nice. I love music with a burning passion. Favorite music you already know. Is this a link to something? Oh, no. It just takes me to some other random profiles. Okay, this blog is absolutely terribly laid out. Like, I'm scrolling through this, the background, everything, this picture of me at the bottom. I'm trying to find my archive for everything so I can go month by month and see what I was posting, but this is just ridiculous. Since this is making it really hard on me and I'm having to sort by month and it's not just giving me a specific year, like, a lot of this stuff was posted in 2011 and some of it was posted after that, I guess. I don't know. I, I reviewed Mute Math in text version and the video's link is still actually up 94 out of 100 back when I used to score shit out of 100 that's fantastic thoughts on Lincoln Park beginning to end which I'm assuming was a pun based on waiting for the end I'm not entirely certain but a lot of these links look dead and it looks like it's just a string of videos what even is this this is the most horribly laid out post if you click on the full post here it's a picture of the band and it's like thoughts on Lincoln Park beginning to end and there's literally nothing but dead links here. Did I actually say anything? Oh, and then it's just a comment saying, hi, I really liked your post. What? I didn't even say anything though. There had to have been something else there originally, but whatever, I did a radio surgery review below that and a 91 out of 100, very nice. 
Now here is the original Neighborhoods Blink-182 review I put out back in the day, and I know I was really, really hard on this. Neighborhoods is the first album since their 2003 Untitled album, Untitled John. Scrolling through here, and I'm not really seeing anything. I'm not, I, I, did I even rate it at the end? No, and then I included some really shitty live footage that I myself took at the Honda Civic Tour in 2011. That's, that's incredible right there. Let's see what we've got here. Um, yeah, this is just really zoomed in and really, oh, well, there's Travis killing it. I mean, that's something, right? Here's a juicy post. The top 50 pop songs of the 2000s, the greatest ones. And number one is Makes Me Wonder by Maroon 5. I'm, I'm scratching my head a little bit at that one because I've put this over. I'm with you already. I mean, there's definitely some really good songs in here. Holy shit. Several Maroon 5 tracks. Misery by Maroon 5. First of all, of the 2000s would imply 2000 to 2009, and I have a 2010 track in there, so math's a little bit off. Um, interesting choices in here. I would really have to rethink this. If I did this again at some point, I must have been desperate for some content here because I have multiple, I have a lot of Maroon 5 in here, and then Good Girls Go Bad by Cobra Starship. Nice. Oh, what was I thinking? Monday, August 20th, 2012, Muse Madness track review. Before I start the track review, go give the song a listen. There's the link. Okay, you listen? Great, let's continue. Nice. Nice little witty humor and commentary there, John. Overall, I'm somewhat disappointed in the band's choices musically, and my hopes for the second law are up in the air. Don't worry, John. It all comes back down. They're floating up in the air, all the particles there, but they brought it all back in because the second law is a great album. I know I hated this song at first. I probably was seething behind the keyboard when I wrote this post, but I tried to pull it back a little bit and put it at a three out of five. Definitely one of my favorite Muse songs now, if that helps. But then there's something called trying to stay relevant, which causes the band to just sound generic. Okay, let's try October. Roll the dice and see what we get here. Sunrise Avenue, artist profile. Guessing you haven't heard of these guys, yeah. They're definitely from Finland, so a lot of people probably haven't. Wow, I wrote up a lot about that. I, I reviewed the artist, 97 out of 100. Hell no, I've listened to them in more recent times. I do like them, but 97 is saved for uh, really high, and I don't, why am I rating out of 100 again? Group Love Never Trust a Happy Song Review Slash Download. Ah, <laughs> yes, the good old days when I used to include a link to a torrent or a zip file in my review. That is the way it's done. That's how you support the artist, John. I'm so sorry. The moment I heard the first line of colors, Group Love had me hooked. So fresh and original, a rare breath of fresh material, and a world full of crappy cookie cutter pop music. Good God, I could fucking cut, cut myself with that blade of edge right there. That's just a little bit over the top. Crappy cookie cutter pop music. Somebody was going through a phase where they just hated pop, and I don't know what it did to you because just like six months later, I was putting out the list of the best pop songs. I came across this band after a sleepless night. I was trying to keep myself occupied, and I stumbled upon this song on Billboard.com under the top rock song chart. Nice. So basically admitted that you're just up lounging around playing video games, doing nothing with yourself while you're actually supposed to be studying for college. That's where I was in 2011. In November of 2011, I reviewed the Gym Class Heroes album, The Paper Cut Chronicles 2, which I think they haven't put out an album since then. But one, the picture is now missing. I used all these links from probably like shitty Russian websites or something like overseas and I embedded it in my blog so nothing is showing up anymore. And look at this text. Look at this green text on a maroon background with this ugly ass video just kind of interjected and it's aligned to the left. The formatting on this absolutely looks even worse than MySpace did. And this was after MySpace. What is my excuse here? It sounds nice, fresh, and overall, I give this album a 90 out of 100. I didn't I didn't understand what being critical was at that time. I don't think I gave anything less than like an 80, and I could fucking slap myself for that. Wait, hang on a second there. Featuring Ryan Tedder, triggered, holy, oh my God, Ryan Tedder, you're everywhere, man. I'm even going back in time, and there you are. Stop, dude. Stop watering down everybody's sound, please. Navigating over to my month of birth, December. Let's see what we have here. I'm waiting for one specific post and I think this was in December of one year. Not entirely sure. Uh, how Katy Perry cheats the music industry. Yep, that's what I was looking for. I remember being so worked up about this back in the day because she got like five number ones from her Teenage Dream album, but she did it on the back of all of these remixes like E.T. featuring Kanye West and just stuff that I didn't like. It didn't sit right with me. 
And I wasn't happy at the time. That's why I broke out this fucking neon ass text over here. Hey guys, this post is a bit different than usual, but it's something that really pisses me off and I wanted to share my thoughts with you. Geez, you know it's serious when I didn't use any line breaks. Like the spacing in this is terrible. Like I'm looking over here and no, false. I feel like I'm not even putting a space in between the period and the line. This is bothering me now as an adult. She had five consecutive number ones on the Billboard Hot 100 going for a six. People think, wow, that's incredible. No, false. So I feel like Katie cheats the system, and it's probably not her fault. Well, nice, you threw that one in there. Saving grace right there, John. I really want to know what that original picture was. It won't load, but I'm pretty sure it was her, like, laying on the cloud. Hold on, I'm gonna look it up. Katy Perry laying on cloud. I'm pretty sure this was it. Laying on cloud. Yeah, here we go. I'm pretty positive that I used this as like the article header, like, oh, trying to get those clicks and it worked. This was like my most viewed article ever. Perry's latest single, The One That Got Away, has really struggled to work its way up the charts. They cut the price of the single to 69 cents on iTunes, but wait, that wasn't good enough. It's stuck in the middle of the top 10. Oh, what do they do? Another remix, this time featuring B.O.B. What the fuck, Miss Perry? Are you that desperate to have another one on number one single? Isn't five off of Teenage Dream enough, you greedy bitch? Fuck you, Katy Perry? Holy shit, that was, this got so aggressive so quick. I apologize right now. I don't know why I said that. I was so fucking mad. I'm literally the definition here of some dude that's like in his teenage years. This was 2011 for the record, sitting there being like, oh, she doesn't deserve any of the success. I'm so jealous and I'm so mad. Why does she get to have things and I don't? Oh no, and I went on to be a rock elitist too. Why can't some good bands like Foo Fighters, Green Day, Foster the People, or Cage the Elephant get a number one hit? Because America's taste in music is totally fucked in all caps for the majority. Thanks for reading my rant. I just summed it up right there. And just know, it's no chance of fate that Perry has had this many number one hits. <laughs> Ooh, talk about some anger issues. Oh boy, mm, tense in here now, I'm sorry. I used to do this a lot. I posted my top 50 songs of 2011 and what I'm listening to. I actually miss doing that one. That, was, that one was fun. All American Rejects, Some Days Gone. Oh, look, a picture that actually still works in 2019. It's an old scene looking photo of Fun. Oh my god, Jack Antonoff looks weird with that much hair. Jeez, I'm still kind of reeling with how mad I was in that Katy Perry post. I think I was going for shock value, but... <laughs> Oh boy, huh. Katy Perry, if you have anybody watching this, I, I, I feel bad. I shouldn't have said that. All right, we're jumping over to April. Up All Night is an overused name. Okay, so this is just a short post to point out something I've noticed in music. Everyone seems to want to call their song or album Up All Night. Hey, guess what? I made a series years later called Common Ground, John, and you got to talk about this exact thing with songs that have like the same words in the title. First, there's Hinder's song. I went to Hinder is the first example. Are you, are you kidding me? Like, just like, you, you whip that out of your pocket. Like, that's like, you're slamming it down. Like, there's the evidence right here on the table, officer. Up All Night by Hinder. Everybody's titling it that. Even Hinder are doing it. Country artists, Kip Moore, uh, Drake, uh, One Direction, Blink-182. If you search Up All Night on iTunes, it brings up hundreds of results for albums and songs. I am so fucking stupid. Like, I kidding me, man? If you type that in for like burn or like anything, holy whatever else, like I'm over here ranting about naming songs that it's been done way too many times. There's plenty of words out there. Call it something else. Keep it real, John Album Review TV. Oh no. Keep it real, boy. Linkin Park, Burn It Down track review, which I loved that song, so I don't see that being that cringy. The Now Playing series that I used to do that I mentioned a minute ago. Oh yeah, there's the Hoodie Allen thing. That's when Hoodie and I first connected. So shout out to all the old schoolers out there that were around for All American. That's when I got on board and me and Hoodie connected over this. Oh wow, there's the full review. I think he actually tweeted this out. I gave it a 4.9 out of 5. Nice to see that I at least had moved over to the out of 5 rating instead of out of 100 at this point. I'm pretty sure I changed that in like early 2012. April 1st, 2012. Not an April Fool's joke though. The review archive. That's right, I used to update this. Oh no. Some of these ratings are so obsolete. Like, I can't even imagine this. I don't even know. You're gonna have to go digging for yourself if you want to see this because I'm not scrolling any lower because cringe! Okay, whatever. It got the best of me. I want to see how long I actually kept this going. I actually, wow, I updated this for a while. All the way up to Halcyon. I would update that 
wow, I gave that a 3.5, and I'm up here literally giving, like, Hollywood Undead, like, a 4.75, and the Bangarang EP a 4.5? No. no. My ratings didn't have any consistency. I didn't make sense back then, and if you were around back then, please let me know in the comments, and I will, like, reward you with, like, a reply or something, because I'm really sorry that you had to go through that. But thank you for growing with me if you did. If you want to see me react to more stuff like this in the future, then please drop a like on this video and drop a comment down below letting me know if you had ever seen my blog before. If you really want to check it out, not for the faint of heart, I will leave a link in the very bottom of the description so that it's not too easy to find. I put myself on blast a little bit today, so I hope you guys enjoyed watching this one. Make sure to subscribe if you happen to be new or not subscribed yet, and I don't blame you, I guess, if you unsubscribed. If you want to see a couple of recent videos, including another reaction, then tap these cards here. Socials in the description, including my Patreon, and I'll see you soon for more right here on ARTV.